I'm going to show you how to divide fractions. And I'm actually going to show you why you take your second fraction and you flip it over or you find its multiplicative inverse or its reciprocal, why you do that, and then why you multiply. So to start with, we could go 3 fifths divided by 4 sevenths, which is really 3 divided by 4, which I could write like this, because a fraction bar actually means divided by over 5 divided by 7. Now, I don't know about you, but that is an awful yucky looking answer. I have no idea how big this answer is, where it falls on a number line. It's not a number that I can understand. and It's certainly not a very simple answer to understand. So I'm going to take this and turn it into an actual answer. Before I can move forward in my explanation here, I do need to explain to you that any time you multiply something by 1, it doesn't change its value. So that means if you have 3 times 1, our answer is still going to be 3. If I have 2 times 1, my answer is going to be 2. And if I have 100 times 1, my answer is still going to be 100. So no matter what I multiply a number by, I mean, no matter what number I have, as long as I always multiply it by 1, my answer is always going to stay the same. I'm going to use that concept here to help get rid of these fractions that I have in my answer. Another thing that you need to understand is that the, that the number 1, if I were to write that as a fraction, I could either write that as 1 over 1, I could write that as 2 over 2, I could write that as 3 over 3, but for this example, I'm actually going to use the I'm going to use 4 over 4 and 7 over 7. So if the number 1 can rep be represented as a fraction as the same number over the same number. So to start with, I'm going to put those two ideas together. So that means I'm going to take this and I'm going to multiply it by 4 over 4. Because remember, 4 over 4 is 1, and any time I multiply something by 1, it doesn't change its value. So that means I need to do 3 fourths times 4. So over here, 3 fourths times 4, which could be over 1, is equal to, you multiply across, you get 12 over 4, which can be simplified to be 3. So that could be, is going to become 3 over, now I just need to figure out what is 5 over 7 times 4 over 1, which is going to be equal to 20 over 7. So now I have this answer of 3 over 20 divided by 7. Now this isn't a very, still not a very nice looking answer, but it is getting better. I have 3 over 20 over 7. So just the same way I got rid of the 4 here, now I'm going to get rid of the 7. And I'm going to do that by this time multiplying by 1, and I'm going to represent that 1 as 7 over 7. And I know that 7 times 7 is 21 over... And now I'm going to figure out 20 over 7 times 7 is going to be, I could cancel, I mean simplify, is going to be 20 over 1, or just 20. So that means my answer is going to be 21 over 20. What I'd like you to notice here is what I actually did was this. I actually started with this fraction, 3 fifths divided by 4 sevenths, and I figured out that that's going to be equal to 3 divided by 4, which is right here, over 5 divided by 7, which is right here. And then I took that whole thing and I multiplied by 4 
and 4 right here. And then I multiplied by 7 over 7, which is right here. Watch this. This is where the whole thing comes together. Notice that we have two fours here and two sevens here. So if I cross these two fours out here and the seven here and the seven here, because dividing and multiplying just ends up canceling out, aren't I just left with a four here and a seven here? which is the multiplicative inverse of this. So by dividing and then multiplying and multiplying, the dividing and multiplying cancels out some stuff, and you're just left with the multiplicative inverse. So we just, we're left with going 3. We were just left with going 3 over 5 times 7 over 4. So it's a very long explanation, but that is why you end up inverting and multiplying the second fraction when you actually are dividing fractions.